Oh, we go out there and arrest dancers because they are crying. They are, they are crying. They, 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 they are crying. This is unfair. I collect phone from one girl. You collect phone? Mm. From, from one girl. One girl. Mm. I mean, mm. for you, it? Put to rest. So that's a mission that I need to because it's actually... Two male suspects, do Michael and Ilya Bulos, were arrested in connection with his weapons. Almost every week in Nigeria, suspected criminals arrested by the divisional and state police commands are paraded before the media. During these parades, spokespersons or heads of the security agencies narrate how suspects were arrested and grant access to journalists to interview suspects before they are charged to court. Sometimes, paraded persons are later found to be innocent of the crime they were previously accused of committing. But just before the jury pronounces them not guilty, they would have been extremely demonized on pages of the newspapers and on electronic media. It is clearly a you know, born out of desperation to impress. You know, when crime is being committed, police will be looked upon uh, to get those who are behind the, the crime you know, arrested and prosecuted. Uh, so most times when they don't uh, succeed in getting the right persons and they pick people randomly at the scene of crime, the only way to prove to the entire world that police is still working and they are doing their duty is to parade those who have just been arrested, who in the eyes of the law are clearly innocent until the contrary is proved. Parade of suspect is a third world uh, uh, syndrome, third world kind of uh, thing. It doesn't happen in most advanced uh, countries. There have been an outcry against this long before now. But I don't think uh, there's any sign of abating. It's still, it's, it has become a tradition, in fact. Every senior police officer wants to do that. But you notice that because of the kind of policing we inherited or we practice here, innocent people most times are you know, paraded. The concept of parading suspects dates back to decades ago, especially during the military rule when suspects or criminals were paraded and sometimes executed by a firing squad. The practice of parading suspects has gone on even under the civilian rule. In the process of parading suspects, many citizens have had their rights abused by law enforcement agencies thereby violating the position of Section 36, Subsection 5 of the 1999 Constitution, which states that every person who is charged with a criminal offence shall be presumed to be innocent until he is proven guilty. In all honesty, there is no law that empowers the police to parade suspects, you know, before the media. Rather, the law says, especially the Constitution, that every suspect is presumed innocent until the person is proven guilty by the court, not the police. So we all know the job of the police. They can arrest and do the investigation. It is not a civilized practice. It has no backing of the law. It's unconstitutional, it's unlawful, it's illegal, and should actually be discouraged. From, uh, from, the, from the hierarchy and from the uh, rank and file of the Nigerian police force. And in other security agencies, including the AFCC, they will just ask the AFCC, AFCC will ask you to carry a board. You carry a sign you know, to show that you are, you are a suspect of the AFCC, for God's sake. And at the end, you don't end up convicting that individual. So my, my question is, how do you now explain to the people you have shown this person as a, you know, as a criminal, as, how do you explain to them that he's innocent? The regulation made it clear for us to uh, create an avenue where citizens would know what the police is doing about their safety. If they have a criminal gang terrorizing their area, for instance, and the criminal gang is eventually arrested, they have the right to know. They also have the right to know whether the person is charged to court or not, and what is the punishment? And how can that happen 
through media uh, uh, briefing, you know, definitely. So it is not unlawful to do that. When it's debatable, some people still believe that it's unlawful to parade generally. Then if you say it's unlawful to parade generally, then it's unlawful to practice uh, uh, journalism. What will you showcase? These are the information you are giving to the people. There is a criminal gang, and the criminal gang is arrested, charged to court. How will you tell the people this without showing them evidence? So it is not unlawful. Journalism is not unlawful generally. Informing the people is not unlawful. Empowering them is not unlawful. It is their constitutional right to know what the state is doing because the duty of the state is to protect the citizen. So the citizens must know what the, the state is doing about their safety. Confronted on why the suspect shouldn't be subjected to a media trial, The Guardian learned from some officers that the parade of suspects is a strategy to warn members of the public to desist from illegality. The Guardian also gathered that the weekly or periodic parade of suspects is also an opportunity for the police to update and inform citizens about the efforts of security agencies at combating crime. But the police insist that there is no law stopping them from parading suspects even before a law court finds the suspects guilty or otherwise. Security agencies also think that the act of parading suspects and making them appear guilty does not violate suspects' fundamental human rights. It's not pronouncing him guilty, but for citizens to be able to understand because we have a duty to protect everybody. And this is a citizen who has taken the wrong part of the law and he did it successfully. How did he do it? We need to explain to citizens to understand. When you have instances of housebreaking constantly and a, a particular modus operandi that they use, citizens are informed so that they will be on the lookout for such elements and be careful not to fall victims of crime. But the police have always come up in defense of their actions. They claim that it helps to fight crime. It helps to name and shame and uh, it uh, also helps them to, uh, uh, by naming and shaming, you discover that uh, a lot of people, a lot of young people, youths and uh, people who are even nursing the idea of going into crime would not uh, want to go into crime because uh, they feel that uh, once you do that and you are caught, police will not only take you to court, they will parade you before the media. Your family people and village people will see you. The police are not the only agency who practice this. Other security agencies like the Economic Financial Crime Commission, EFCC, Department of State Security, DSS, and the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, are also some of the nation's security units who have embraced the practice of parading suspects before the media and members of the public, even before their statements are taken, allowed to talk to a lawyer or charged to a court. When we arrest cultists or traffic uh, robbery suspects, we recover locally made pistol mostly from them. The Commissioner of Police said, let's move further to find out where they are getting these guns from. It's not enough arresting them and charging them to court. And we trace this to a particular syndicate. And we got them arrested. They brought more of the arms to sell, as usual. And we got them arrested from Benue. Journalists asked them questions and they said, yes, I'm the manufacturer. Where did you learn this from? From my father, a uh, blacksmith. He taught me this and I also improve on it. And I've been doing this over a period of time. And this is the amount I sell. And look at some of the people, persons he sold them to. We're also arrested. Journalists have the opportunity also to ask questions. You know, that makes it more real. People understand that this is true. This is not fabricated story. The essence is to protect the people, to arm them with such information that will help them keep safe from those criminal elements. When asked if the media is culpable in the practice of parading and questioning suspects before the court trials, the Guardian's head of judiciary desk, Joseph Onyekwere, said the media is not in violation of any law as it wouldn't turn down such an invitation from the police as it is their constitutional duty to pass information to the citizens. 
if a journalist is interrogating or questioning a suspect and the journalist is not even able to ask vital questions, I'm sure you, you will feel disappointed if you are watching. You know, the reason for those questions are they are just a follow-up to possibly confession from the fellow. <laughs> the suspect may, may have said, okay, eh, we are the ones who robbed. Then the journalist is at liberty to say how many of you were there. I mean, who is your leader in these operations? Is this the first time that you've uh, conducted such operations before? So if the journalist is not able to ask these questions, even you, if you are viewing or you know, watching, you feel disappointed that, I mean, there are too many gaps here. Uh, a, a, an understanding of what is going on presently by the Nigerian Union of Journalists, who will now advise their members. So if it is issue of commission of police calling you to parade criminals who have not been convicted, don't honor that invitation. And of course, if there is no journalist to honor it, there is no journalist to carry the news and all that. So they have nothing to parade. So, but the moment journalists are collaborating and, and helping them to sell this news that is not correct, that this person is a hardened criminal, and then sell their newspaper and you know, advertise their television, that's why you see what is actually playing out. Journalist is after the news. Journalist wants the scoop. And uh, as a matter of fact, if you don't, if you as a journalist don't question these suspects and you just allow police to dish out press releases to you about these suspects, it's more dangerous. So when they say Mr. A2 and they parade the Mr. A before you, you will be able to ask the Mr. A question. Mr. A, did you steal? And if they speak contrary to what police, we've always written, we've always, we've been seeing some suspects saying that I did not do it. They put this gun in, inside my car. And we write it like that. It, it has backfired for police many times. However, it is important for the country's security agencies to adopt best practices on how suspects are handled and treated. The police must not appear to be pronouncing judgments on suspects by parading them in the open before the media as it may affect further investigations. Such acts can also be considered a violation of their fundamental right to a fair hearing by a competent court of law. I will encourage every citizen to explore the option of seeking redress. If you are paraded unjustly and you know you didn't commit any offense, I mean, is there in Chapter um, 4 of the Constitution, 1999 Constitution of Fundamental Human Rights, you can go and seek redress to enforce your fundamental right as a citizen because you have uh, the right to be presumed innocent. So if there's an allegation against you and you are certain that you have not committed that offence and your right has been infringed upon by the police by arresting you, not limiting it at that level but taking you to public parade, then you are at liberty to seek redress. The, the best practice if an accused person is accused of a crime and after you have finished your investigation and have gotten the evidence with which the ingredients of the evidence you know that we now nail that individual, I charge that individual to court and let the court now be unhindered in order to take evidence as to the guilt of that individual is innocent. And after the court has made a pronouncement that this person has been convicted, of course at that point you show the face of a criminal who has been convicted by the court. He has a right of appeal still. Uh, so, but I'm saying that the court must make a pronouncement as to the innocence or his guilt before you can now say that this person, you know, has been convicted. You don't need to start parading an individual who, whose only offense is that he's alleged to have committed the offense and he has not been convicted because he may be innocent. Like a warrior who shows off the spoils of war after a battle, it appears the country's security agencies might have adopted the practice of parading suspects ammunitions and other items seized from suspects to prove and show to the general public that the officers of the nation's law enforcement units are working.